If you had the opportunity to have a 10 minute conversation with your 10 year old self, what would you tell them? Keep playing basketball. Please focus on basketball. Don't hang up, please. Realistically, I'd probably tell them to. Welcome back to another installment of The High School Perspective. What do I say now? My name is Will. (laughs) Today I'm joined with three gentlemen, two which have been on before, one who has not. The one who has not. Would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Skylar Kendrick. Let's go. Finally got on one. Okay, so yeah, we got got the boys back. Um, All of us have known each other for quite some time. so it's going to be a pretty fluid conversation today, um, and because of that, me and Terry have kind of, kind of had like this looming idea of doing like a hypothetical scenario type of topic. So that's what that that's what the topic is, is going to be today. It's going to be hypothetical scenarios. So anywhere ranging from would you rather statements to if you could, if you would statements. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me just check in with you guys. How are we all doing? As uh, have we been good? I haven't really had you guys on in a while. <laughs> Good, good. I'm good. Chilling. So let's just jump right in to our first question of the night. I think I'm going to alternate between the two um, just because I don't really want too many in a row. Um, so this first one, we're going we're gonna to get into it pretty pretty quickly. Um, so th- this one says, um, is, this is kind of ironic because my last two videos are about parents and this one is sort of about parents as well, but it's nothing like from the parents. Um, if you could go back in time and give your parents advice before you were born, what advice would you give them? So I guess I'm, I'm assuming that this is kind of like, what advice would you give them? Like knowing that they're about to be the parent of a child, which is you. Ooh, who wants to go first? That's a really good one to start. Yeah. This is a- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Will, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. I'll go. Um, let me think. Um, if I were okay, so the thing about my parents is that they had me um, a lot later um, in life, I guess. For for them, I don't know if that's a good way to put it at all. Um, but th- they had been um, th- they had a lot more experience, I think, just in life in general before they decided to have kids. And if I were to tell them anything, I don't think that they'd use exactly uh, like all the advice. But I would have said like knowing the person that I am today, I would have said that I'm a very um, difficult kid as a child. And um, there's a lot of turmoil that's going to come and you have to be ready for it. Uh, I don't know. um, I don't really know like how you'd get me to be any different just because I don't think there's any like set in stone advice that I would have, like that would really change the outcome, but just know that you have a boy that is going to be pretty rambunctious at times. Um, that's going to be always thinking, always uh, thinking very creatively and, and outside the box. He's not going to be the best in school, unfortunately. Sorry to break it to you. And uh, he might annoy uh, his, his future sibling from time to time. Um, but aside from that, I would say, um, you know, just, just take your time with everything. And, you know, I think y- you guys um, are going to do a great job. Uh, one way or another, uh, because that you know that's how I became the person that I am today through you guys. I know that they're gonna watch this. And they're gonna be like, "Oh, well." I'm just gonna be like, right here. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, "Oh God." That was it's, good. It's like a hard question because it it seems like when you look back at like your whole childhood, it's not like. I mean, as speaking for myself, like there's not a lot of things that I'd want them to change because I feel like they did like a really good job raising me. Like not, I'm not even trying to like make myself feel better, but like they, they, they pushed me, but they didn't push me to the point where like, I didn't want them to change. Like I could tell like the stuff they did was to push me to be better. Um, which is good. I know a lot of parents aren't like that, so I'm really lucky to have them. But um, I probably would have liked to have speak, spoke, or grow, 
grew up speaking more than one language. I feel like that would have been a little helpful, and they were definitely capable of teaching me, but it is what it is. Maybe speaking Spanish and some, like, always around people who do. Um, that would have been helpful. Um, hmm. Honestly, not sure. That, that's, like, the one thing that came to mind. But, yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. It is, though. It's a tough question. I feel like if I were to give my parents advice, I don't think it'd necessarily be more for me, but it'd be for, like, them. Because, like, if they do things differently, like, there's a chance that, you know, will be no theory. So, like, I don't know. I would say, well, for my dad, stop having so many kids. <laughs> <laughs> like, bruh. Like, I didn't meet my uh, 20-year-old sister now until I was 16. So, it was like, dang. It's like, what the heck? Oh, I have a whole other sibling? And it's not even just one. It's two. I didn't meet both of them. And it's just like, I don't know. It kind of hurts both, like, my parents and, like, the kids, too. That's why our relationship is kind of choppy. But, like, yeah, for him, it just be stop having, like, kids. And then um, for my mom, it'd be, like, plan stuff out more. Because she doesn't plan. But, hey, she always pulls it off, so respect to her. Um. Okay. I've been thinking about this for a while. If I were to go back in time and give my parents advice on me, if I couldn't fix their, like, relationship, I recommend that they would, like, even if they split in the end, I recommend that they... I don't know how to say this. Um, like, they try to work together more to, like, raise me because I feel like... They both did good jobs raising me individually by themselves, but if they kind of, like, synchronized it, I think it would have been, like, better as a whole. But, yeah. What a question to stick on, uh, to kick <laughs> That was a, like, that was a that banger. Was a no banger. Cap. All right, so now we're going to uh, transition over to the would you rather question. And the first one says, hmm, which one should we do first? I guess since we just talked about parents and moms, we should do this mom one that someone thought of. I forgot who it was, but it was one of you guys who had said, um, would you rather save your mom's life or a hundred other people's lives? And, uh, this one, um, I, the, the problem is that I know that my mom's gonna be watching this. Like I watch, like she, she'll like watch the video and critique me on my either interviewing or just hosting skills, uh, for these videos. So as I'm sitting there right now on the couch, Will, um, you should not be fearful. You should just know that the answer that you gave was what you were thinking in the moment. Might might change over time, but uh, no, I would save a hundred people's a hundred other people's lives. Um, it, it doesn't really matter the person uh, to me because I I feel like the if you're I mean if you know the person I think it's obviously it's going to be sad either way like to see one person go or a hundred other people go. If you don't know any of those hundred other people, you have to think of like the people that they know in their lives because that's so many more lives than one person. And, um, obviously it's, it's, it's a little weird, uh, to say it, but <clears throat> because, you know, it's my mom and <laughs> I, I love my mom, but a hundred other people, there's just, there's just no math there. I think any, any person that would put their self in the perspective of what those hundred people, like if it was like a group sort of thing, like they all knew that I had the choice of making that decision. I feel like I don't know, like, cause it's from the mind of a high schooler. Uh, I, I don't know what choice they'd expect me to make, but, um, or for any high school to make for that, for that matter. But yeah, that, that's the reason why. And it's just because there's, there's no real math there that would kind of, um, not save a hundred people in that scenario. I think that I would also save a hundred lives, but not necessarily because, like, oh, I need to save 100 lives because it's more than all. I feel like my mom couldn't live with that guilt knowing, like, I chose 100 lives just to save hers. Like, she's obviously important to me and, like, the people around her, but I don't think she feels like she's important enough to put her on a pedestal over 100 people's lives. Like, she just couldn't live with that in the end of the day. So, 
I would just have to pick the 100 people's lives. I like that reasoning. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Right? That, that made me think. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just going to have to go the other way um, on this question. Um, you're not going to get another mom in your life. You're not going to get another woman who cares about you that much. And I don't know, like that, that was just the first answer that came out of my head. I'm like, a hundred people is a lot of people. Like, I don't, I don't know them. And like, I know it sounds selfish, but I don't know. Like, that's like a key figure in my life. And I, I, I really like Skyler's reasoning because it made me rethink. I'm like, dang, like, you're right. Like, mom was going to be like, you saved me over a hundred people. Like, what are you thinking? So I, I think my answer still stands though. Um, yeah, I just, there's no one in the world that's like her. So I can't really do her like that. Oh, I forgot. I was going to do that. Oh, like, all right. What's up? No, um, so I actually chose the way that Andrew went too. Just because, like, that's my mom. Like, I don't know. I'm a momish boy, too. Because, you know, she made me. And it's just, like, I feel like I, you know, owe her that. Like, she did, you know, take care of me. And she didn't take care of me for my whole life. Because I did go with my grandma for a certain time period. But, like, even then, like, that's my mom. She made me. So, I don't know. I'd have to go with her. But, yeah, Skylar's answer was really had me, like, damn. 100 people. That's a kill streak. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's dude. And I know living with that, I would probably like, dude, that changed my life. That changed anybody's life, honestly. But yeah. That could take some people's lives. Yeah. No, but I was I was thinking, like, I'm I'm I mean this in the most respectful way possible, but a lot of people, a lot of women aren't cut out to be like good parents and it's just crazy that you know my mom doesn't fit that category and i'm just yeah she did like way too much just to you know i can't do her like that i know i said that before but yeah i'm a mama's boy like terry and yeah (laughs) i think you make a good point because it's not even just women but some people some, some people just in general, I feel like are put in such good positions in their lives because of their parents or like they have a lot because of the parents. Like I know for me, like, man, I could not imagine my life without the amount of like spoilage. Is that a good word? You, you I don't know. I was, I was a spoiled kid. Like I really, I was like, I got a lot and I wouldn't even have to ask for it sometimes. Um, and I, I, it got to the point where it's like, I, I finally, um, like was like, wow, you know, I am a spoiled kid. I don't know like when I came to that realization, but it was sort of like, if you are someone that is spoiled or that has a lot in their life, you know, you got to do the best that you can with it. I think, cause not a lot of people get that opportunity and it's pretty sad. Um, but yeah, I think just kind of similar like to what Andrew said, like, if you are one of the people that's like, just not cut out to be a parent and it's, like specifically your fault then you know either do something about it or just 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 get off the planet bro like i don't even know it's it's just like (laughs) a lot of people take what they have for granted i think you know it's just it kind of irks you it makes it just makes you upset that's the way i feel like you you, because you see people like all like these like quote-unquote hot cheeto girls dude like what are you doing with your life like, what are you doing? Get off the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Who put you on this planet? <laughs> Who put you on Earth, bro? So this one is a little weird. And I think depending on your religion, you may or may not be triggered by this. <laughs> but it, it just it's just a hypothetical situation. Like, you know, if you were if this were to happen, you know, obviously people have different speculations about what happens in the afterlife, but this question says, if you were reincarnated as an animal based on your personality, what animal do you think you would come back as? This is based on your personality, all right? So this is not your favorite animal. Um, I'd probably be 
a koala or a panda. And I'd say that because actually I don't know too much about pandas. All I know about koalas is that they sleep all day. And then that's kind of where I fit in. I want to be a koala. Yeah, but that's I mean, that's I wouldn't want to be one either, but that was just the question. <laughs> it doesn't have to be my favorite, but that's kind I wouldn't of want to be mine either, to be fair. Yeah. Pandas are cool though. Like Poe. Um but Poe is pretty dope. Yeah, he's munch. <laughs> crazy how that was a movie. Um, uh, okay, so it's funny. Me and Skyler are kind of like cheese yeah. in heart because um, a while back, me and him went camping and we actually did like this tarot card reading or whatever. And both our, our, like it told us our spirit animals. And ever since then, I've just been like, yep, this is this is right. <laughs> so um, I think, uh, or want to be um, an elephant. Just because uh, I kind of forget what the card said, but like <laughs> my personality, I feel like I'm an elephant. Just upon like what they do, you know, like because they don't do much, you know. I try to eat healthy, they eat healthy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just feel like I'm similar to an elephant. Huh. So if I were to be reincarnated as anything, I think. I would probably be like a penguin. No, I don't know. Because, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I just thought about that. I'm not like really a follower, but I'd probably be like an isolated <laughs> animal. So, like, probably like a leopard. Because I'm really like, I'm not purposely antisocial. It's just like, I have to like branch out and talk to new people. It's really like awkward. I try to like stay away from those instances. But, like, other than that, like, I'm active and I, like, try to be active and I'm pretty jumpy and spiritual. So, I think a leopard would be fitting. I was going to say something similar, just based off, like, your description. I was going to say a house cat. Um, I like to sleep a lot. And just based on my knowledge, cats sleep a lot. It's kind of ironic because I'm allergic to cats. So, it's, you know, if I were to be reincarnated into that, I think maybe that'd cure my allergy. But, um... The reason, so the other reason I said that house cat is because they're pretty feisty as well. I'm a pretty competitive person and I like to, I don't like to argue, but if I were to get in an argument, I can argue and like, I can argue for a long time. And, and also if I, (laughs) um, also I think if I were bothered by someone, I feel like I have the tendency to get really mad just based on how they were like to approach me. And I feel like house cats have kind of like the same, like, or they're kind of on the same wavelength as me in that way. But they're also very creative. They also like um, a lot of isolation, uh, sort of like myself. Um, and when they do, they can be very playful. And uh, I'm a pretty social guy, so I'd put myself in um, that area of um, like playfulness. So, yeah, I would say a house cat just based off of that description. I actually want to change more. Cause yeah, I was, I was like, why an elephant? <laughs> Dude, you, when you did the card thing, it was just super cool. But no, now that I'm thinking about it, like how you guys described yourself in it, and I was like thinking while you guys were talking, I think I would want to be like a bird of some sort because I always like to go places and I don't like sitting in one place. But I like, you know, eventually I do come back to one place and, you know, settle down for a little bit. But then when I'm ready to leave, I just leave. So a bird, probably like a falcon. Oh, because those are cool. <laughs> That's a much better answer. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Oof. I have to save myself. Uh, so this question um, is very different from anything that we talked about so far. And uh, I think, I think Andrew, you gave me this and I was like, mm, that's good. Uh, this one, and this doesn't really apply to us right now because some of us just aren't driving yet, but let's just assume that we were, would you rather, Always know that you have a 5% chance of getting into a car accident or never drive again. I'd rather always know or always, you said 5% chance? Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather always know there's a 5% chance of me getting into a car accident rather than not driving. Because I feel like driving is just so helpful, especially if you're like me and you like to like go do different things and you want to get there quick, you have a car. Plus, I don't know, when I'm driving, it's just like, I don't know. Don't you feel some like it's fun? Driving is super fun. Like 
I was always interested in it. And like, you know, I watched all the Transformers. I had all the car, model car things. <laughs> I don't know, driving's just always been something I knew I was going to like to do. And like, I'm not going to say, oh, I'm the car guy, you know, but like, I do have an interest for cars. So, um, yeah. But also, it's just so essential. Like, I mean, it's not essential, but like, it's so helpful because we get places so much quicker. Like, if we were back in the old times where we still have to ride horses, you know how long it'd take me to get to Castro Valley? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably not that long, but still. And like, I don't know how fast, like, or how far horses can travel. But I know in the movies, it'd be taking days to get to places. So, <laughs> plus, think about it. Apple prices would go up so high because that's what you feed them. or like hay and all that. I don't know, but yeah. Oh, you I mean know. like Apple, like the fruit? I know. I, <laughs> like, I got what he was saying. I'm like, <laughs> I thought you meant like was... iPhones and stuff. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Also, yeah, like cars are bought and they're very expensive. Yeah. So I feel like that would affect just the whole world if we didn't have cars. And obviously, the question was only 5%. So, you know, some people like me would take the thing. But, yeah, no, that's my answer, 5%. Uh, for my answer, I think that I would take the 5% as well, obviously, because, like, cars are very useful. But it's also because, like, I kind of don't want to live my life by, like, statistics and percentages because, like, people who do that just, like, stress themselves out for no reason. And it just kind of messes, like, with your life if you're like scared of stuff to happen all the time like every time i walk out the door i have a chance of dying somehow so like am i just not gonna go outside you know what i'm saying so that's just my perspective on it yeah my my answer was kind of similar to skylar's and i'm gonna go with the five percent too but i was saying i'm saying my answer is similar because if you really think about it there's so many things that could happen on the road that like can cause an accident and, like, you're already kind of taking a chance by, like, driving. So, you know, you might as well go for it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I am going to agree with the rest of these guys and also go with the 5%, even though I cannot drive yet. Um, a 5%, obviously, like, that's probably, like, statistically higher than, like, an average just person just to get into an accident. I don't even know what those numbers are, but it's probably pretty low for the most part. I think that a 5% chance while it is high, it doesn't compare to never driving because like, otherwise you're basically just permanently quarantined. Imagine that. Imagine being in quarantine for a set amount of time. Couldn't it be me? Imagine not being able to leave your house for such a long time and having to mooch off of other people for rides. Couldn't it be me? Uh, that's literally exactly what I've been doing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay i've been waiting for this one this is one that i came up with and um it, the reason i came up with this one is because i've sort of been in this situation before so it's not exactly a hypothetical for me but it could be later in the you know like later down the line if this were to happen i'd be pretty upset <laughs> um uh this question is if you were put in a situation in where your two best friends were fighting over something and would not speak to each other how would you handle it being the middle person i'll say my first thought is i would try to fix it because i don't know you know your whole group but like at the end like if i if like my efforts were like effortless is i don't know i would stop trying i just let them fight <laughs> <laughs> Because it's like, dude, and especially, like, say if they were fighting over something stupid, it's like, bro, like, what are you doing? I don't yeah, know. it's going to depend on the situation. Like, for me, yeah. it was a pretty stupid situation because, I mean, so this was back in, like, freshman year. Like, I had, like, two best friends that were fighting, and it was just sort of, like, over something that was, like, ridiculous. Like, they, like one person thought that something happened, and then the other thought something else. You know, there were two different sides, and... I was put like right in the middle and one of them was saying to me like, Oh, you don't have to choose sides. You know, I obviously know that you're good friends with, with them and that you're good friends with me. So it's like, it's no like problem or dealio that we have to um, really fight about or talk about. 
or put into, you know, a huge thing. And then the other person was like pretty much the opposite. They were saying like, Oh, you have to choose sides. If you're friends with them, I don't like you, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, and I, the problem was that I was closer with them. So it made me feel like, hmm, well, that, I mean, it's nothing out of the ordinary since I already know them. And I know that they're like this, but it was sort of just like a, hmm, you'd think that after your two best friends fight that everybody would try to at least talk to someone like to try to resolve the situation, but that's not really what the case was. Um, they are friends today, not as close. Um, and they are uh, all, both friends with me to this day as well. But if I were to be put in that situation again and handle it a different way, I would first try to see where both people's heads are at. And if there is any sort of like possibility of them coming together and talking again in the near future, if not, um, well, then I would say you're in a shithole and you'd probably want to seek help from other people. I'm going to start off with like what Will said and just see where both of their heads are at. And I'm going to let them know what I think. And if one is right and one's wrong, then I'm going to let them know that. But I think I'm going to try not to be much of a middleman because if you end up just being the messenger from like one person to here, like the message isn't really genuine or heartfelt. Like I'd rather have them just talk it out. And if they're not able to talk it out, then that's just how it is. But yeah, that's probably how I would approach it. But I, I wouldn't like to be in that situation. I feel like if my two best friends are arguing like or just not talking at all for like a decent amount of time i would try to get both their per- the, of their perspectives and i would just have to be like i don't know like being a middleman in that situation really sucks cuz you don't want to pick a side because then your one friend is just like will said like one of your friends is going to get upset and then the side that you're taking is of course going to be happy with you. So you kind of have to be impartial at all times while trying to fix their whole relationship. So I would just like, you know, I would just kind of nudge them to talk to each other, but I wouldn't really like give my input on the thing that they're like upset about. And that's the best that I could do. And if they can't fix it from there, like I don't know what they're doing. It's never that serious to be honest. Yeah. Moral of the story. Just don't be petty, please. Uh, Okay. This is going to be, I hate to say political, but it might be political. (laughs) Um, If you, if you can steer away from that, um, because this technically is a political question. Would you rather have a horribly corrupt government or no government at all? And this is kind of ironic because uh, I'm in government now and not even for this class, but in, uh, economics we had to write i think everybody has to write at some point an essay based on uh the different types of um like market systems and stuff which relates to the government and like how things are run in a society so uh i i will just go ahead and say i would rather have uh, a a corrupt government and the reason why is because we've basically been a part of that for the past four years now um just in this country alone i think I mean, maybe to say corrupt is a little is, is a little too biased just coming from uh, like my perspective on how I see things. Um, but from from what everybody's saying, it feels like there's some sort of like like someone's in cahoots with like other people. And I won't go in, uh, into too much detail with, with everything. But I think that if you have a corrupt government or some sort of government in place, it can be fixed at some point later down the line. And that's why I always have, like, I know a lot of people are angry at this country and how it's handled um, a lot of the, what like whatever stuff has been happening in the past um, few years or few months or even like few weeks. Um, but I'm always going to have hope in like what we as a government or country can accomplish. And maybe that's too much for some people. Like maybe you'd rather have just a complete over like, just complete reset of the government and um, have it be completely changed and built from the ground up there. And you know, that that's going to apply to some people. It's going to not apply to some people, but I'm always going to have hope. And that's the reason why I would choose a corrupt government to live in. um, Like hopefully as a temporary basis. Um, I agree with Will, but like, my perspective on why I wouldn't want a government at all is like 
everybody in America has their own individual ideas, and we decide as a government to kind of try to generalize our two main ideas between two separate parties. So I feel like by le- like not allowing like to have a government at all, it's just going to cause people to go uh, on their own ideas and then find like their leader. And then it's just going to start a war in America, to be honest, it's going to be an anarchy. So anarchy. that's just why <laughs> that's just why I wouldn't do that. Cause people are always going to be their own people and they're going to have their own ideas. So if there's no government in place to kind of like balance that, even if it's corrupt, it's always going to be the better option than just total anarchy. Anarchy. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I would, I think like Will and Skyler, not having government at all, it's going to be total chaos. Cause like everybody's just going to be going like everywhere. So, like most people will come together but it'll be in small groups and eventually it will start problems so yeah i think having a corrupt government probably better but then again i'm not very political or like you know so yeah i'm probably not the best person to answer this question i feel that terry um i my answer is probably similar to will and skyler and i don't this this isn't totally unrelated, but I I was watching an anime earlier today, and there was this quote from this guy. I'm not gonna say his name, but he said he was talking to someone, and he said, "In he said in this corrupt world, there's no such thing as clean money, because they're talking about like laundered money or dirty money." I think and it, it made me think. Like, so many people in this country think that, like, working hard is going to lead them to success, which means, yeah, a lot of people do work hard. Obviously, it ends up differently for certain groups of people. And, you know, not everyone's given, like, the same opportunity. Like, we all know this. Um, but I think, I think I'd probably say that we would need a corrupt government because if we don't like no one's really going to hold us accountable and no one's gonna like make sure like even if some people are already living in poverty and uh just not in good life conditions like if there were no government like that would that just be how it is for everyone and i just feel like I think that if we did have a corrupt government, there'll always be people that want to reform it. And I just wish that that group could like get bigger and have more supporters of people that, I don't know, I'm kind of just going on right now. I just wish there were more people that supported, you know, the equal rights that Americans brag about so much. This one might get deep. I'm not sure how deep it'd get. Pause, but uh, let's just go ahead. and I'll just go ahead and say it um, without any kind of intro. Um, if you had the opportunity to stop or save someone from doing something that could harm them or others, how would you talk them out of it? Or maybe not talk or, you know, how would you, how would you deal with it? That's really open-ended. Yeah. Um, that. I, I mean, obviously, it depends on what the person's doing to harm themselves or others. If they're doing it, they probably have a reason to do it. And maybe, hmm, Will, what, do you, what are you thinking? Well, I, I mean, I was going to answer it, like, uh, based on, um, I was going to sort of, like, split into two. Like, one person, like, like, a scenario in which somebody would try to harm themselves and then a scenario in which someone would try to harm others, I guess. So, well, here, I'll just say, um, yeah, it, so obviously, like these guys said, there's a lot of different ways that this question could go and a lot of different ways you could approach it. I think, because I, I think I've been in a, like, I think I've seen 
both of these types of things before. Maybe it's, and it's not necessarily like a personal thing um, where like I've actually had to step in and do something about it, but it's more of sort of like a, like I see like what's happening and like, you know, I, I hadn't really had the chance like to, to be a part of it, I guess. Um, if I were put in the position where I would have to stop somebody from harming themselves, it's tough because I think like, I would say it depends, but sometimes it might not, it might not even depend. If someone's going to harm themselves, you have to do like, you'd feel inclined to help them, I think. And so, so I think what I would do is first try to talk to, um, not, not to them. I would try to, um, I would try to talk to someone else and just like inform, like someone that they're close to and inform them about like what's going on. And after I do that, maybe if I'm close enough to them, I would try to hear them out, not necessarily like about why they're doing this, but just like, like maybe like what they're going through. Um, and then after that, I think I wouldn't necessarily like try to fix their problem or just like find a solution to what they were going through. I'd more so just be there to listen and be someone that they could talk to. I think a lot of times people, um, especially men, I think, or men are just guys in general will try to solve the problem when someone gives it straight to them. That's not necessarily the approach that you want to take every single time. And because when you do that, it, it's basically like, it's basically like giving them a motive to like try something that might not work out for them. So that's, that's what I do. If I were put in that type of situation, if it was a situation where they would harm others, that's, that could potentially be worse because depending on how they go about doing it, I think there's a lot of room for error in which you could try to stop them. If you were to just try to calm them down, that might be the approach I would take. Um, and then just sort of see where it goes from there. But if it got any like larger than that, I honestly wouldn't know. Um, because I've never really had to deal with, per, me, like personally, I've never had to deal with anything like that before. That was um, like, I, I would really have to think it out, I feel like. Um, so I, I have a better, like for me, I have a better response to um, the self-harm rather than um, the harm for others. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, when you, uh, when you mentioned that um, a lot of men try really hard to give a solution to a problem uh, when someone has a problem. I mean, in a situation where someone's trying to harm themselves, I feel like the first thing they're probably looking for is comfort, which I feel like girls are a lot better at. And not that like all girls are like, would be fit to be in that situation, but I, I don't think I, I'm better at giving solutions than I am at providing comfort for someone that's, you know, wanting to do something like that. But if someone is trying to harm themselves, I would try to, give them comfort and let them know I'm there for them. If I know them, I mean, I'll probably end up being there for them anyways, but, uh, you know, I, I would probably just want to let them know that like, they have someone to talk to. They feel like they're alone. Just try my best to give them comfort. But if they're in a situation where they're wanting to hurt other people, then, I'd probably take a different approach. I'd probably want to ask them like why they're doing it. Do they gain anything out of it? Um, and if they're not able to stop themselves, then I would try to stop them before they could hurt anyone. Um, in this situation, I feel like, if somebody was either harming themselves or harming others, the best that I could do is try to get one of their family members to talk to them or like try to explain to them how detrimental it will be to their family if they go through with this. But like, because I know if either they were harming themselves or harming others, 
they would, and they saw their parents or their mom specifically, they'd be like, like, they would see how, like, hurtful their parents, like, how hurtful the situation would be to their parents. Like, they don't want to see their kid harming themselves or others, obviously. So, I don't know. Like, it's kind of weird. I get what you're saying. Because you don't know what that person is going through. So, they could be doing this out of spite of their family or out of spite of their school or whoever they know. Okay, so then this one says, uh, it. this is sort of, this is, I, oh my gosh. So, this is related to, I think, another video and where uh, we were talking about the future or something. I can't remember what what that was but um this says uh would you rather die in 20 years with no regrets or die in 70 years with lots of regrets kind of open-ended as well but take it as it is i'll go first i'd rather die in 20 years with no regrets and my reasoning for that is like you know when you make a decision you're always hoping for the best decision and sure, sometimes people could be wrong and be like, oh, just because I didn't regret what I did doesn't mean it was bad. But, like, I don't know. I know that life isn't forever. And I know that, you know, eventually, you know, your time will come. So I'd rather go happy than go sad, you know? I'd rather go knowing I felt the best that I could, you know, possibly feel. So, yeah, 20 years. Um, I think, I think I'm going to have to go with the, what was it? 70 years with, with a lot of regrets. I, I say that because I know that like the 20 years, those will definitely be like the best 20 years of your life. Like, except when you die, but for one, that means you're going to die when you're 40. Like that's not even how old my parents are. Um, there's that. And I think when you have 70 years, like you can do a lot in 70 years. And I know that you're going to have a lot of regrets. I already have regrets and I'm 18. I think I, I think when you live a life with regret, it allows you to learn from it and to make sure that you don't make that same mistake again. And rather than just, not being able to learn from it at all in 20 years. Like, I feel like I'd want to grow as a person for 70 and you can't have that without having some regret in your life. I agree with Andrew and I took a similar take on the question because if I live for 70 years with regrets, then I'll have information and mistakes made that I could show the rest of my family or my children to like and try to groom them to make sure that maybe they avoid those certain mistakes, depending on how like terrible they were, because making mistakes as a person is really the only way you'll grow. So living the perfect life is just not really what I want, because I I would look back like 10 years like, if I lived the 20-year life or the 40-year life, I would look back 10 years and be like, dang, I haven't made one mistake. I'm so godly. Like, I don't know. Like, I would just rather improve over time and show, like, how mistakes in your life don't necessarily mean your life is over. And making mistakes, you can re- always regret them. But as long as it depends how on the way how you move forward with knowing those mistakes and regretting them. Like you just always have to improve yourself and push yourself to keep moving forward. Then like holding on that regret. This question was pretty easy for me. I I would rather live the longer life uh, knowing that I'd have more regrets. And it's only because I I think uh, if, if the question was something like, would you rather like live longer and die unhappy or live a shorter life and die happy? Maybe my answer would have fluctuated. Um, and maybe, it, I don't know, maybe the outcome of the situation would have been different, but obviously w- whatever type of regrets you're going to have, you're going to try your best and to grow with them. If you're that kind of person. 
I mean, sometimes, you know, in, in life, even though I've, you know, we haven't been um, here for very long, just in our, barely even um entering adulthood um i feel like there's a lot that you learn like as a young person that can be used later in life down the line and i think when you take those aspects of of what you've learned and um try to do them in such a short amount of time um i feel like those years are wasted in a way if you try to take experiences that you have growing up and then you're going to die 20 years later and, you know, but just live the perfect life. There's nothing really, I think that you can, because the question says no regrets. Like if you have no regrets, I think you have some sort of a problem. Um, Like you might have remorse for some things, but I think that's a little different. But if you were to have like literally no regrets, that means that everything in your life living up to that moment, like nothing has really happened to where you've had like a, I think like a serious problem or something. And I feel like I'd rather have that and live a longer life because that's just sort of what everybody's bound to go through at some point. I don't really see like um, the benefit in doing all the good while dying earlier, as opposed to um, doing what everybody else is going um, through having more regret possibly, but still, um, you know, living that longer life. So I would agree with um, Manager and Skyler for this question. Uh, We're going to do the last would you rather question now, because I think the last if you statement is better. So this question, and it's, it's sort of similar to what we just talked about. It's another like dying alive sort of a question. This would you rather statement says, would you rather be known when you're alive, but forgotten when you die or unknown when you're alive and remembered when you die? Kind of gives me Coco vibes. That's literally the whole plot. Of, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's like where the that's like where the whole problem came from. I mean, so we're not in the Coco verse, so I don't really care what happens to me when I die. I don't care if I mean, actually, now that I think about it, my parents forget me when I die. That'd be pretty sad. I mean, wait, they'll probably. <laughs> um, uh, okay, then I, I kind of made an argument and then argued. <laughs> I don't know like by by known and unknown do you mean like everyone and no one or like can you can you like explain the question I guess, well, how would you put it, Terry? Because you were the one that gave me this question. If I was to answer this question, I would say everybody, yeah. Like, everybody, yeah. I don't want to live my life with no one to talk to. Like, that's, that's, that's not a fun life or a life that I could see myself enjoying. And once I, once I'm gone, like, I don't care. I'm gone. If no one remembers me, then no one remembers me. It's hard because it's not like I'd want a life of fame. Like, it's not really my type of lifestyle. If I get famous, then I get famous. But it, I don't really care for having a lot of people know me. But I don't want... So that's, that's why I was trying to figure out the question. Because if I'm unknown while I'm alive... If unknown means that I could still be cool with like a few people without having to get to know like a bunch of other people, I'm fine with that. But you know, that's why I was trying to figure out the wording of the question. Yeah, yeah, it's up. I think it depends on your definition of the two words. But okay, um, the reason why I would rather be unknown and then known after I die is because if I'm known my whole life and, like, I'm super famous or, like, popular and everybody knows me and then they just forget about me when I die, like, did they really know me? Because if it's that easy to forget about someone, then you really didn't get to know them or learn more about them. You kind of just saw them at face value. It's just, 
I kind of feel like, except for like the greats, the great great actors, like I feel like that's how we treat most like C level famous people. Like a lot of people know them, but like as soon as they die, like we're just like, oh yeah, oh so and so died in the news yesterday, and then people just go on with their life. Like that's how it ends up being most of the time, and I just don't really want that. Yeah, I think I would agree with you guys, uh, being or some of you. Uh, I mean, and of course, I don't know what happens after death, but knowing that I may have helped somebody even when dead, you know, that's just a good feeling because that means I left something good, you know? That was a weird one. That was a weird one, yeah. Okay, so this is going to be the last question of the evening, and it is the final if you statement. We had five of each, and uh, well, I think all ten were, to, or all ten together total were pretty good but all very different which is going to make for a weird video but uh yeah so to wrap up the evening this last question says if you had the opportunity to have a 10 minute conversation with your 10 year old self what would you tell them oh god dude oh. Okay. i need time to think about this bringing it back full circle sort of to like the parent to parental advice in the beginning 10 minutes I tell him minute conversation. I tell him focus on math more. <laughs> Please focus on math more, because that's oh my god. And then I would say start working out earlier and taking care of your body earlier, because I feel like that's really helped me now. And it also I don't know it just builds a lot of structure, like waking up at a certain time and doing this and that, and then also fitting it into your regular day without having like a gym open you even though you don't really need a gym but it's helpful that's all fun and then um dang, there's so much it's tough to fit it inside 10 minutes that's, that's yeah. why i know i feel like i'm a, the biggest thing for me was that yeah i'm gonna just go with that yeah that really like a, like it's like a 10 minute phone call that yeah like very very quick because if it's like that, I'd first, so here, I'll, I'll just say, I'll just say mine. Um, a 10 year old converse, uh, a, a 10 minute conversation with my 10 year old self, I would first say, don't hang up, please. There's a lot I have to tell you. And then I'd go on to say uh, everything that he's about to be um, experiencing, or I guess learning in his uh, adolescent years and beyond. You're a very creative guy. And if you get an idea, you should really think about doing it rather than pushing it to the side. Um, because as you grow older, you're going to realize that these ideas could actually like touch a lot of people or maybe even help out some people that might need it. Sometimes you should be very, I guess, cautious about um, people what pe I think well I think you're going to have an idea of what most people are like but you're obviously not going to go you're you're not going to know what everybody is going through at one time so make sure to when you approach someone treat them how you'd want to be treated and and the other, then then the last thing I'll say is um get your license dude because that's coming up whether we, whether you realize it or not um do that and then do all the other stuff too. Cause I fall behind on a lot. Um, Oh, if you fail a test, don't worry, Just study hard for the next one. Cause me and you are not that good at taking tests, but it's okay because we pass our classes. Tell that one guy in China not to make that something in <laughs> eight years, seven years. That'd be pretty cool. COVID never happened. I, th I think that's how it started, right? Yeah, I don't even know. Someone ate a bat and... Yeah, I'm know. pretty sure that's how it started. Batman. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, the, there's that. Um, but besides that, realistically, I'd probably tell him to... Don't, don't be scared to fail and to always look to try new things. Because looking back 
on my life for the past eight years. Um, I feel like I should have done a lot more with my life instead of just be scared to like branch out and expand my taste on certain things, especially foods. I grew up as like a really picky eater and like, I'm just now like starting to try a, a lot of foods. If you, if you enjoy doing something, don't let other people ruin it for you, especially sports. Cause I feel like other people, I let other people ruin basketball for me. And it was, yeah, it was a mess, but yeah, if you, if you enjoy doing something, like don't let other people rain on your parade, just do what you do and do it best. Don't be scared to shoot your shot. You're, you're probably not very confident, but yeah, I think at the time, like fourth and fifth grade, I didn't have a lot of friends. Like I was really alone and yeah, like don't, don't be scared to talk to new people and to, you know, get out of your comfort zone. That's probably the number one thing I'd tell myself to get out of your comfort zone and you're not going to become a better person by just staying comfortable your whole life. Um, you're going to be tall. So you got that going for you. Get your geography of SoCal down when you go to visit. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably what I, that's probably what I tell myself. 10 year old. Um, I would probably tell myself to keep playing basketball and, um, (laughs) just like, don't really like, care what other people's opinions are like based on like on you like just don't care and just keep doing what you're doing and make sure you play basketball though guaranteed though but that's about it (laughs) because I really wouldn't want anything else to change that's really the only thing that I regret not doing so oh my gosh yikes all right let me just say I just wanted to say one more thing um there's gonna be a lot of people in life that will try to tell you that the thing that you're doing is wrong and that it's not like what is considered to be cool or like what's considered to be normal or what other um, like adolescent kids are doing or what what other um, teens are doing. Cause a lot of the stuff that you're going to like get made fun of for, or like get, um, I don't know, just a lot of like hate for is going to come after middle school. Like you're going to be, pretty much okay in middle school I would just say take more chances but in high school you have to let other people's opinions just fuel your fire because I think when you have um like when you when you get mad like I know you have a tendency like to maybe lash out at other people like that you don't mean to or to um just not really do anything about it and sort of just keep it bottled up inside it's two two very different things that you have to that you're gonna have to learn to to cope with but um yeah if if someone is is getting on you or like people are talking behind your back you have to not let that get to you as much because you're doing fine now like we're doing all right and I think um a lot of that is because um you're going to learn how to use that hate and all that um just negative energy to like the best of your ability you know channel that all into what you want to do. Don't let anybody else tell you what you can and can't. That's what I'd say. Yeah, so that is the last question of the evening. And um, pretty random video. That's like, that's just the way to sum it up. It's a very random video that covers a lot of different topics, but I think it was good for the most part. It's gonna be really long. And it's gonna be a lot to edit, which I'm very excited about, not really, but um, yeah, that, that was great. Um, so thank you guys for joining me on this, um, I don't even know what you'd call it, journey of a video, I guess, um, in which we explored many different topics. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, did you guys have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, that's about it. The only thing is, um, there's, when you do the edits, there was a moment in time where Andrew was like, hmm, can you please put the villager over his head? <laughs> I'll do it just for you, not for the actual video, but I'll do it just for you. All right, for sure. <laughs> and that's our video. Clap it up, clap it up. <laughs>